But I will be using this in just a few minutes to kind of show you something, hopefully, that will, will help you enlarge what we think of God. And in fact, our sermon this morning is a start of a, about two or three weeks I'm going to be dealing with God is. And this morning, I want to kind of start with the, the mindset of God is bigger or greater than you can even think. God is greater. We, we take certain things just for granted, and, and we just live in the world. I know someone was telling me the other day they, they just went hunting in Nebraska, and they were like, there's this one farm over there, and, and they were talking about how it's third generation and the grandfather and the father. And, and I think 
I'm living in my little world and I have no idea that hundreds of miles away there's this another family living. There's these, there's these whole other people that are just going through life and they, they're doing their world. You ever feel like that? Like you go somewhere and then all of a sudden it's like, this is real. I've, I've been on vacations. Elise has drugged me to several different places through the life and, and she loves to travel and she's, she's helped me just, just expand beyond, uh, and I can't thank her enough for all the places she's allowed, because I would never have got on airplanes and gone and done. And so through the years, she has, she has blessed me. And I've been to Israel and different places. And, and some of the places I've been, I'm thinking, while I'm sitting here right now, in fact, I'll even keep on my phone sometimes the weather for that area. And, and the whole purpose is, is, oh, right now in Italy, it's 53 degrees. Or, or right now in Israel, it's... And I'm thinking, wow, God is greater and bigger than we can even comprehend most of the time. He's doing more than a lot of times we even think about or can imagine. I I love the word bigger, greater, great. I mean, I love stuff like that. Tell me if you know this guy's name, and and for that, don't don't put the picture up or anything yet. I'm just going, do anybody ever heard of Thurl Ravenscroft? Thurl Ravenscroft. Has any of you ever heard? Does any of you have his music at your house? You've never heard of him. You, 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 I've got news for you. You probably have. And you probably have some of his music at your house. In fact, you would probably know him because me growing up, it created within me eating a certain cereal. Because this guy was a bass singer. And, and he wasn't one of those bass singers that's like had to go, oh, let me try to get my voice. No, he, he was just, his voice was natural. He was a natural bass singer, just had a natural voice for him. So much so that Walt Disney and other people heard him and they were just in, in, enraged with, with what he could do. And so, if you ever heard of the Grinch that stole Christmas? Anybody ever heard this song? You're a mean one. Mr. Grinch. Now, if you have that video at your house, the cartoon version, you have his music at your house. You have it. Some of you got it on your phone. You got it. You have Thurl Ravenscroft's music on your... And with me growing up, if you watch the Aristocats when you were growing up, the, the cartoon Disney where they're sitting there, doom, doom, and, and the bass guy that's singing, hit it, boys. And, and that's him. That's his voice. In fact, throw the picture up, and, and this is him. But there's one character that sets him apart from all the other. In fact, for 40 years, he was the voice of Tony the Tiger. For 40 years, Thurl would end the commercial by saying, they're great. And I would go buy the cereal. Even today, this week, I ate Frosted Flakes. Because they're great. That's what I was told. It seems like we hear that phrase a lot. It's great. It's the greatest thing ever. It's, it's the greatest car. It's, it's the greatest new invention. It's the greatest phone you could ever have. And you will never need another one until next year. Until the better one comes out. We hear that phrase great all the time. But turn with me to Psalms 145. Psalms 145 verses 1 through 3. I want to share with you what the psalmist says. We just use that word great. A lot. We throw that phrase out, and many times, boy, oh, that was great, wasn't it? I mean, that, that was just a great movie. It was a great show. He's a great friend. But here's what the Bible says I will extol you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. Uh, Another phrase for that is unattainable. Another phrase for that is unfathomable. It, it, It just means that any words you can come up with to say, you can't get there. 
You can't arrive. You, you, there's nothing in you or no way you will ever wrap your mind or around how great God is. And the psalmist says, when I sing unto God, when I'm praising him, I'm not doing it telling people that, oh, I know God. I, I've met God. I understand God. He said, I do it with the understanding that as I live day to day and year to year and I look outside every single day or something I've learned, I realize that God, if I live for a thousand years, I will never truly understand. Understand, I will never see how awesome and how great and how mighty and how big he is. He is a God that's unfathomable. He's a God that's unsearchable. He's a God that's unattainable. He's a God that's unreachable. He's a God that you can't get around, you can't grab hold, but yet at the same time, he looks at us and says, pursue me. Come on after me. Well, why would I do that for somebody I can't? Because in the journey, you're going to learn things and you'll learn things that somebody else doesn't learn. And we get gather together like today and it's so good to see you because we gather together and every one of us in here has stories about the God who heals or the God who brings us through or the God who breaks away or the God and we gather together and we collaboratively gather and we say listen we're describing a God we're telling you about a God I used to love the illustration of the blind men that were going to tell you what an elephant looked like and in that one guy grabs a leg, and he's like, oh, an elephant's like a big old tree. And another one grabs the tail, and he says, oh, an elephant's like a rope, long and skinny. Another one grabbed the trunk and the tusks, and they all grabbed. And it wasn't until they all came together and described what they felt could they fully understand what they had touched. And God's that way. The enemy tries desperately to keep us away from church or to keep us away from gatherings. I know we've got like men's Bible studies coming up, and you guys ought to be a part of it. You're like, oh, I don't know. Just to sit in the room and hear other guys' stories. What happens in your life when you, when you reach out is you, you grab another piece or you hear from somebody else and you start to realize how big, how awesome our God is. Let, let me show it to you in a few ways to, this morning. First off, God is immeasurable, unfathomable in, in, in just creation. The psalmist would tell us all the time that all of creation cries out, there's a God. All of creation. In fact, go with me to Psalms 148, verses 1 through 6. Psalms 148, verses 1 through 6. Listen to what it says. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, the sun and the moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for He commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. I love studying stuff like that. Okay, so let me see if I can, I can bring it down to an understanding that, that will help us this morning realize I, I love creation. I love study, just like I love studying people like Thurl. I, I, I'm, I'm a fanatic. If I see something on somebody, I'm going to look them up on Wikipedia and I'm going to quickly find out, wow, look, look, look at what they did and look at their life. And, and, and so when somebody ever asks me down the road, you ever heard of Thurl? Yes, I have. Yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. Well, let's just say we're going to describe the universe. And we'll just, we'll shrink it down to a size that we can understand. Because, because if I was going to, in your mind, get this concept, if, if I got the fastest runner, Hussein Bolt, if I got Hussein Bolt at his fastest time, and I told Hussein Bolt, I want you to start running from the earth and get to the sun. I want you to start running. He can run up to 22 miles per hour. I mean, he is motoring. Runs 100 meters, 120 yards in all, almost nine seconds. And if I told him, I want you to start running, you won't slow down. You're going to keep running at that pace. And I want you to run from the earth to the sun. It would only take him five hundred years it would take him running at top speed 500 years to get there 
with no slowing down, no stopping, no resting. That's, I can't imagine that. Well, let's shrink it down and let's look at it this way. Let's just use where we're at right now. And this is our sun. This is the sun. Now, this little dot right here is the earth. If we shrunk it down, that's the earth. You see it? And that's the sun. In fact, you can put 1,300,000 earths in the sun. 1,300,000. We are this little marble floating in the middle of nowhere, held up by seemingly nothing. And the sun sits there, and just putting it to scale, let's, let's just start from way out. We know Pluto, Pluto isn't considered a planet anymore, but if Pluto was still a planet, you know if this, somebody held this up, in fact, I need a helper, somebody, one of you guys come here and help me. It's good. All right, if we held this up, hold it up in the air, that's our sun, now, I need to find out where Pluto would be if we shrunk it down to, sky, to scale. That's the sun. I would have to take a little P, smaller than this, to represent Pluto because it's not very big. And how far away do you think I would have to get to get it to scale? Well, how about this? If I got in a car right now and I drove you to Walmart and told you to stand in the parking lot, in Walmart parking lot, standing there holding this little marble, that's the scale of the sun from Pluto. Almost two miles if you shrunk Earth and the sun down to that size. Look at the person beside you and say, that's crazy. That, that's, that's crazy. Uh, well, let's just kind of play with it. If, if, you were, if you were at the fruit stand, let's say you were at the fruit stand, then you would see Neptune. I would take this little marble and I would put it at the fruit stand down the road and that would be there. How about one mile away? If you were one mile away, you would see Uranus. Uranus is one mile from here. If I got in a car and drove one mile and held this little marble out, then you would see where it would fit to scale. We could keep going. I love Saturn. I got me a pool ball because it's got rings around it, so I got me a, a tin ball. It's got some rings. <laughs> Saturn. Saturn would be six football fields away. I would have to carry this ball six football fields away to get it to scale. In fact, if we were trying to use that ball to do a circumference of our little galaxy, you would have to have a five-mile radius just to use that as the scale. It would take five miles if you made the sun that small. If you did that, and, and, and then how about Mars? You know, we've been sending people to Mars. Well, Mars would be one 0.5 football fields away, but Mars would look like this compared to the sun. It would be one and a half football fields away to scale, and it would look like this little pea. In fact, the smallest one that we have of all is Mercury. In Mercury, I had to tape it down real good because I had to get a, a little black bean seed and it is, by scale, Mercury's pretty close. Mercury, you would have to go to the parking lot. If you were in the parking lot holding this little P, then you would be to scale of what Mercury would be from the sun. Do you understand? Listen to me. God created it and holds it in place. God created it and designed it. God fashioned it. God built it. In fact, go with me to Colossians 1, verses 16 and 17. Colossians 1, verses 16 and 17. And do you know that this isn't even the sun that we have? It's not even the biggest star there is? There is Betelgeuse and other stars that I could spend time talking about that literally they you could put a hundred of our suns inside of. 
That's why even at the darkest of night, you can see stars way off. Those are stars that are so big and so large that even on hardly cloudy nights, it will break through because it's so large. Even though it's hundreds of light years, thousands of light years away, yet you can see it. Why is this important, Brother Lot? Because go with me to Colossians 1, verses 16 and 17. Here's what it says. For by him all things were created that are in the heavens and are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, or all things were created through him and what? For him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Why would God, who only needed to build this, all he needed to was make an earth, and make a sun and a moon. That's all we needed. But God said, no, no, no. If I do that, then you won't know how great I am and you won't know how big I am. And what I've described to you is one galaxy, what we call our Milky Way galaxy, which is one of millions of other galaxies we can't even get to. We're sending telescopes trying to take pictures we can't even get to. And God said, let me tell you why I made it. I made it because I didn't want you ever to walk outside and think your God was not big enough or mighty enough or strong enough to handle anything in your life. I hold the whole universe and I do it without anything else. I hold it all in place. I designed it, I built it, I made it, I fashioned it. Well, what's it spinning on? My word. What's holding it in? My word. What keeps the earth on its axis? My word. Everything was established for my glory. I did it just because I was showing out. God said, I just didn't want you to be mistaken when you looked outside and think I'm a small God. Places you can't get to. Places you can't take pictures of. I exist there. One of the greatest scriptures that I hear, and people always talk about heaven, and and I, I can't describe heaven because God says it's beyond you. I mean, if I can't understand, and science spends every day, and we spend billions of dollars, and have people have degrees just to spend their whole life learning about, is there life on Mars? Then why in the world do you think you're going to understand if God tried to explain to you all the intricacies? But he did say this, and it's always stuck with me as a kid. When I think of heaven, I think of this verse. He says, and you will rule this world and worlds to come. I don't even have an understanding of what that means. I don't even know how far God has it in his mind, what he's going to fashion, whether we're going to live on different places and put different suns. We serve a God that has no limits. He is the creator God. He has designed it and fashioned it. And part of what brings you here today is that it is because there's a God who is so big and so large that there's no impossibilities. It's unfathomable. Number two, go with me back to Psalms 148, verses 7 through 13. Let me read a little more for you. Not only does He, in the universe, in creation, the elements and designing. But listen to this. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, and all the depths, fire and hail and snow and clouds and storm and wind, fulfilling His word. I want you to realize that when there's storms and there's different things taking place, listen, they are all under the authority of His word. He can speak that it moves here. He can speak that, no, you don't go there. He, he is everything that moves. That's why Jesus was such a, an astounding person to the disciples when he stands on the front of a boat in the middle of a storm and he just speaks to it like you would talk to anything else and he tells the storm, peace. That's enough now. Be still. And the wind stops and the waves stop. He he not only controls nature, but listen, mountains and hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts, all cattle, creeping things and and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Verse 13, let them praise the name of the Lord for His name alone. Listen now, there's only one who's great. Let His name alone 
Let me tell you where our problem comes. We start thinking coronavirus is great. We start thinking which president we pick, that's great. We start thinking that if we get enough education or we get enough, we start putting other things and we start, it'll be great if we can do this. It will be great if we can have this. It would be, let me tell you something, don't ever exalt anything above the greatness of God. The biggest mistake you'll ever make in your life is when you decide something is greater and to be feared more or to be revered more than the name of your God. Your God is the greatest thing that you have. Your God can keep you well. Your God can bring you through. Your God can win every battle. Your God can come out victorious when nothing else can. There's nothing greater than your God. I'll show it to you in an illustration. I'll show it to you in an illustration. It's a little video This pastor does a great job of showing you just how nature works with God. Listen to this. That means when I start singing, How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Do you know I'm singing with birds? Do you realize I'm singing with the trees that are rustling? Their ru- Do you realize the grass that's going along is singing with me? Do you realize that the whales that are surfing in the ocean are singing along? Do you realize that God didn't just design and create a universe, but he created it to sing praises unto him? When he wrote that in scripture, they didn't even have an idea about all that they're studying now. And the more they study it, the more they come across it, the more they relate to it, the more they realize that there's this awesome God out there that's in control of everything that's reigning and ruling and rolling over everything and we're walking around like we ought to be afraid of anything that bumps against us do you realize that your heavenly father is this awesome God that can't be content he's unfathomable he's unattainable he's unreachable he's greater than your greatest thoughts will ever be wow I may not mean none to y'all y'all just going to you know, go on with life. But to me, next problem I run into, I start singing. I'm going to just start singing with whales. And I'm going to say the birds are right here with me. And God is listening to everything that I'm saying. He's not only a great creator. He's not only over nature. But listen, he controls the ways. The ways of our life. Go him in your Bibles to Romans 11 and 33. Romans 11. Here's what it says. Oh, the depth of the riches of both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. I could speak another two hours right there. I could just show you more video and show you more stuff and I could show you just enormous stuff that you would think, how did that... Man, that is incredible. It is. And as people ask, what are you going to do in eternity? I'm going to try to spend probably a whole bunch of it just trying to learn as much as I can, as often as I can, in His presence as much. And I'm gonna, it's going to take all eternity to just try to get a piece of who God is and all God can do. And on top of that, listen to what it says. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways. They're past finding out. Look at that person beside you and say, you're not as smart as He is. I know it's hard for us in our, our world where we, we got it all figured out. But you're not as smart as he is. You can't even figure it out if he does it. It's unsearchable. It's unattainable. And here, here's what the Bible says about it. Let me give you just one way. When we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, look at, look at how his ways were unsearchable. The Bible said that if they had known what they were doing, they never would have killed him. That means he, he put a test in front of all the angelic beings. He put it in front of Satan. We put it in front of everybody and said, I'm going to give y'all a test. And, and everybody failed it. He said, none of y'all could think where I could think. And none of y'all figured out what I was doing. Not until I had done it. If you had known what I was doing, if you could have figured it out, you wouldn't have killed my son. But listen to what he says in Acts 4, 27 and 28. Acts 4, 27 and 28. For truly, 
against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever, what? Your hand and your purpose determined. The only time Jesus ever spoke during the time of the week of the Passover week, the week of, the only time he ever said anything out of, it was a few times. One of those times was when he was riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. And when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and the Pharisees looked at him and said, tell your disciples to, to tell it, you, you, them to be quiet. Tell them, tell them they ought not be praising you that way. And what does he say? He said, if they don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. What he was trying to, they didn't even understand what I just showed you. He said, you don't realize that the whole earth is praising me. You don't understand. It's just natural for them to praise me. The other time is when Pilate stands before him and Pilate is all dressed and he's got his guards and he looks at Jesus and he tries to give him a threatening word and says, do you not know that I have the power to kill you? And Jesus has not answered, has not defended himself, but at this moment he speaks. He said, hold on. You have no power except the power that my Father has given you. And that's what he says in Acts when they're preaching. He said, listen, it wasn't Pontius Pilate that killed him. It wasn't Herod that killed him. And you Jews who, who backed it, y'all think y'all did it. He said, but listen to me. To do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. He said the only person that was determining and deciding the way, the only person that was aligning it out, that means that all through my life, I look back and I'm thinking, man, if that hadn't happened to me, man, if that hadn't have taken place, if I hadn't have done that, if I had, and, and God is saying to him, do you not understand that my ways are so high and my ways are so mighty, you didn't mess up anything. You've been moving in my ways all of your life. The enemy uses your past to try to tell you what you can't be, but God says it's because of your past. Moses, it's because of what you did. All of you, it's because of what you did. It's because you went through that that makes you the exact person that God says, I've designed you for right now. I've made you for right now. I've conditioned it and determined it and nobody's pulling the strings but me. In fact, go with me to Acts 5, verse 30. When we look at his ways, here's what he says. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you murdered and hanged on a tree. He said, the father knew what was going to take place. You didn't catch him by surprise. How how awesome is God? Let me put it to you this way. Think about the people in this room right now. Some of you, if it wasn't for Easter, wouldn't be here right now. Just be honest. You got busy lives. Got to get a lot done before you quit breathing. But God said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to establish something that will even through thousands of years each year create an atmosphere where I can reach out and touch people fresh and anew. God thinks beyond just a resurrection. God said, I put it all in place Designed it. When we think of the nature of Jesus, think of God's ways. He was 100% man and 100% God. That's a big God. I can't even understand that. How is Jesus 100% man and 100% God? God said, that's how I made him. My ways are above your ways. How about Scripture? How did we get all this Scripture? How did we get all this? And Scripture now is so powerful. Think about it. The scripture that Jesus quoted or the scripture that was written down 2,000 years has the same power today that if I walk into a hospital room and I open the Bible and I says, it says here, by his stripes you can be healed. By your stripes, it says to lay hands on the sick. I can read scripture that is 2,000 years old, lay hands on somebody, and the scripture still has enough power that it still works today just like it did for Paul. I can't understand him. 
He's too great. He's too, I mean, even the words that he wrote, he said, let me tell you about my words with scripture and things. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but everything I've ever written, everything I've ever spoken, and when I told the sun and the moon to hang, it'll hang there and won't move. Why? Because my word will never pass away. You can take the Bible and say, well, a hundred years from now, people won't need a church. Oh yes, there'll still be a Bible and there'll still be people reading it and there will still be people preaching it as long as there is a time and a season, God says, my word will not cease. Think about the Trinity. Lord, there's the Son, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and yet they're one. They're one. There's no variance between them. There's no, there's no argument. There's no, there's no misunderstanding. It's just God says, I'm going to show myself to you in three persons. And each one has its own way, its own purpose, its own, and it blends perfectly. How about when you look at his sovereign ability to govern? When you, when you look over his life and he says, listen, I appoint and I move and I raise and I do, God uses all of these things, everything that you see today, to do one thing, to tell you that I am God. And the greatest show that he ever did Our last picture. The greatest show that He's given us for His is this. Now He's created stars. I've shared with you how animals are singing. I've shared with you how stars are beating like a drum. How birds and trees. I've shared with you that Jesus came and, but you know, even after all these years, still the greatest, the greatest point of his power is right there. There have been a lot of great people that lived on this earth and you can go to every one of them's grave. There's been a lot of great people that have said some wonderful things. And you go to every one of them's grave. But there's only one whom God said was my son. And there's only one whom He said, you can take my life, but understand I also have the power to take it back. There's only one who says I am King of kings and Lord of lords. And when we gather together today, that empty grave tells us that there's a king. The same one that said, I'll return. The same one that says, I'm coming back. The same one that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The same one that says, I'll be with you to the end of the way. The same one that says, I'll hold the stars and the moon in place. I'm the same one that says, I love you. I'm the same one that says, I die for you. I'm the same one that right now in this room, even though we're just this little marble, (laughs) we're just this little marble floating around. Could you find yourself, you couldn't make a dot small enough to represent yourself on this marble. There ain't a pen small enough to put a dot that would represent, you couldn't hardly put the United States, but yet God says on this little marble, I put my grace and I sent my son and I made a way for a people that I call my own. And this morning, the greatest celebration that takes place in the world takes place right now. That we who are this little bitty, seemingly nothing, yet at the same time, God says, I dwell with you and I dwell in you. And I fight for you. If you're in this room today, and this old world and all that it's done has told you how small you are. And this world has told you what you can't do. And this world has told you what you can't overcome. Then let me just give you the words of what he says. He says, nothing is impossible with me. 
with me, you can do all things. And that doesn't come from just some thought. That comes from the one that made it all and holds it in place. That means this morning, if you're marriage, if you say, man, I don't see it. The one who holds it all says, I do. My ways are higher than your ways. The one this morning that you look at your kids and think, I don't know if I'm ever going to get that one right. God says, yeah, you will. Because greater am I than anything else that will ever come against you. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get myself where I need to be. Listen, I'm determining your ways. I got you. I know the plans, the design for your life. I'm big enough and strong enough. When people look at me and they say, Pastor, you know, Christianity, you, you got to be weak. No, you just got to be smart enough to know you are weak. Some people just ain't quite figured that out yet. I've realized I, I am weak. But to be on this little marble, I, I was never built for strength. I was built to connect with the one who is strong. And this morning, he cries out to every single one of you, and he says, I have a way, I have a plan, I have a purpose, and if it's mine, can't nothing stop it. Nothing's greater than me. Will you stand? If you'll just bow your head for me, just... Nobody looking around, but just, just this moment, just where we've been, just celebrating in the music, all the videos we got to see, all the, all the sermon, the, we've had opportunity to take a lot in today. But the biggest thing that we have to do, the hardest thing we have to do, is we have to compare what we're going through to the God that we serve. Some days when we don't spend a lot of time thinking about Him or talking to Him, it seems like the problems we have get to be so big. They're just unsolvable, Brother Lot. They're just, I don't see an end to them. I don't, I, this world's so crazy. I'm scared to stop and get gas, Brother Lot. I know. That's why the Paul said, if I had hope in this life only, I would be man most miserable. A lot of miserable people you're going to see and meet. A lot of people trying to find happiness, trying to find something. But that song is still the song that makes the difference. The one we sung a while ago, I want to sing it again. And as we sing it, I want you to compare your problem to a God who holds the universe. To the God that makes the, the whales and the, and the birds and the the trees sing the God that said I did it just so that when you walked out in the morning you would realize that you are held by a God who's big enough and strong enough to see you through to see you beyond even this old life and into a better one one day oh praise him oh praise him all ye lands Praise Him. Praise Him. It is in my praise I make Him visible and the right size. As we sing this song, just, just you, right where you are, why don't you just throw that problem onto a God more than able
I dare you, next, next, even before the day's over with, you're probably going to have an issue. And just stop and say, I got a choice. I can either sit here and think about it, complain about it, or I can just go ahead and start praising God. That's my choice. And I've done made up my mind that I'm just going to praise Him when it's good, and I'm going to praise Him when it's bad, and I'll praise Him when I don't understand it, because I know when it's all said and done, it's going to turn out all right. It's going to be all right. Father, this morning, thank you for me getting to see so many of my brothers and sisters. People ask about all seasons. Once a year, we get to gather together, and it's just, it's like the whole family. Father, I thank you. I'm surrounded by some of the greatest people in the world. I know a lot of them stories, and I know how much it took for them to be here this morning and all the trials and all the, the journey that it took. These are not weak people. These are people that are strong in you. We may not be the biggest city. We may not be the biggest county. We may not have the greatest reputation all the time. But God, here's one thing that even in the middle of where we are, there's still a God who can do more and exceedingly abundantly above anything we could ever hope. We are a marvel to this old world. God, I thank you for it. And I speak blessings over every person, every one in this room, over their marriage, over their children. I speak blessings that the hand of God this year will just pour out in such a wonderful way that they will see you, that they will praise you, that they will glorify you, and that, God, you will get honored for you're worthy of all of it. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Happy Easter. Go give that old devil fits.